Hi friends, it's Miss Christina. I wanted to share a little painting tutorial with you today. And because it's cherry blossom season, I thought we could paint some cherry blossoms. I don't know if you've ever seen a cherry tree before, but they're really, really beautiful. And certain cities have a lot of them, um, like Washington DC, or if you've ever been lucky enough to go to Japan, there are a lot of cherry trees there. And they look like this really beautiful with all of these white and pink blossoms and I have a fun little trick that you can do using cotton swabs to help you make your cherry blossoms so in order to get us started um, you want to put down some newspaper or um, I have just paper towels here to protect whatever surface you're working on so you don't get paint everywhere which I always do I also put on a messy shirt that's already covered in paint in case I get some on myself. So then for painting supplies, you need a palette or a plate or something that you can put your paint on um, just to make it easier. Also, if you need to mix any colors, it helps to have a tray like that. You'll need a palette. It doesn't matter what size, you can make it as small or as big as you want. Um, this is kind of a standard like eight and a half by 11 size canvas. Um, I have a flat one, but you can get the one um, that's uh, got the backing on it. So you could hang it up if you want. But this is what I have. And then you'll need some paint brushes in order to make our tree and to paint the background blue like the sky. So I have a big one here to do the sky. It's just a lot faster that way. I have kind of a small-ish size here for the tree and then a really small one to use um, for some of the details of the tree because when we make our branches, you know, they get smaller as you go to the end. You'll need some cotton swabs. I've got some here. You don't need a ton but you'll need, um, you know, maybe about five or six of them. And then of course you need paint. So depending on what kind of paint you have, you might not need to mix colors. I'm going to have to, but I can show you um, how that works. So for the sky, I wanna do a nice light blue, like in the picture I showed you. So the only blue paint I have is dark blue. So how do you lighten it? You mix it with some white. So we're gonna do that. And same thing with pink. I don't have any pink paint, but what do you mix to get pink? Red and white. So we got that. And I'll probably do a few different shades of pink. You'll also need white just for the other cherry blossoms and then some brown for the tree. And I might need to lighten this one as well. We'll see how it goes. Um, this particular shade has kind of a reddish tint to it. So we'll see how it looks. The great thing about paint is if you don't like the way something turns out, you can paint over it and make it look however you want. So do I have everything here? I think so. One more note, I'm using acrylic paint. It's what I'm most comfortable with. Also, it dries really fast. So we can finish our painting without having to wait too long for the different parts of it to dry. You can try it with other kinds of paint. I just don't have as much experience with them, so I'm not sure if they work as well. Um, but if you do try something else, let me know. Okay, so first we need to paint our whole canvas blue, like the sky. So I'm going to mix up my dark blue and my white to get it to a nice, pretty light shade. So I'm gonna put my blue on my plate. And see, I already got paint on myself. That's why I have my painting shirt so I can do that. <laughs> okay, and then I need to mix a little white in there to lighten it up. And I might need to grab my other white paint because I'm running kind of low. So I've got my white and my blue here and I'm just gonna mix it and see, it might still be, yeah, it's still pretty dark. But it's pretty and it definitely lightened it. So let's add some more white. When I paint a sky, sometimes I like to make it a little imperfect, a couple different shades of the same color. Um, so it's not all a flat, you know, same 
shade of blue across the whole palette. So it's a little better. I still think it's kind of dark. Let's do just a little bit more white and see. And if you're painting along with me, um, I think I'll be really excited to see what you come up with. So maybe you can send them pictures of your creation to our children's email and then I can see them. Okay, I like that. That's a pretty fun shade. It's like a really vibrant spring sky. So I'm just gonna paint it and I don't worry about making it too perfect. You know, when you look at the sky, it kind of has different swirls of blue and you get, you get some of the white in there from the clouds. So I just kind of go and slap the paint on there. Nothing too precise. I like when it has um, kind of different shades. It gives it some character. We know that nature isn't totally perfect and that's what makes it so pretty. So this is why I recommended the big brush because I have half of it done already. It was super fast. So just kind of give it a little texture by moving the brush in different directions like that. Get a little more paint on here. I feel like Bob Ross. If you don't know who Bob Ross is, I highly recommend watching some of his painting videos. I used to watch him when I was a kid and he's got a very, very nice personality, very relaxing. And he's an amazing painter. Okay, getting right to the end here, which is perfect because I'm almost out of the blue that I mixed. And we'll just make sure we get all of that surface covered. Even though we're painting the tree and all the blossoms and everything on top, um, you still want to make sure that your background is totally painted because you don't know exactly where things are going to end up. Or at least I don't. You can plan your painting out more if you would like. So, might get a little messy doing this, but that's part of the fun. Okay, let me just finish that up and give it a little swirly action, which won't be super obvious, but you can kind of see it's a little bit of movement in the background to imitate the clouds and everything moving in the back. So we are all blue. So you wanna let that dry a little bit. Um, like I said, acrylic paint dries pretty fast, so it's not gonna to take too long but while that is drying, we can get our brown ready to go because we're going to paint our tree next. Now, you can decide how you want to do it. If you want to paint a whole tree or if you want to just do some branches, maybe coming off the side of the canvas, it's totally up to you. Whatever you think would look best and whatever you're more comfortable with. The one I tried making already was just some branches coming out of the side, but I think I'm gonna try to make a whole tree today. Um, we will see how that goes. So I'm going to move my brush over here and mix up some brown. So let's see what this shade looks like. That looks very red to me. Let's see what you think. Is that kind of like a reddish brown? So, what can we do? Maybe, what about adding a little bit of black to that? Let me get my bag of paint here. I think I add a little black and maybe a little bit of like a golden yellow. And we can see if that sort of changes the shade that we have. I really love mixing paint together. Um, to see what kind of unique colors you can make. So this is the brush that I'm going to be using for most of the tree. So I'm going to use this one to mix my paint. If you have tools for mixing, that's even better, but I don't. So I'm just going to improvise. So let's see how this turns out. 
try to take down some of that red tone that's in there. And that does look a little better. Let's see. It's a little less red. I'm not sure how that's coming across on camera. Um, but that's, that's really what I wanted. I think I might add a little bit more of that yellowy gold color. This one. And maybe a little bit of white to lighten it. And then I think we'll be good. Do you also like mixing different colors together? I think it's cool. You end up with something totally unique. Um, it's just a little tricky. You wanna make sure that you make enough of it because if you run out and you need more, it's sort of hard to replicate. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna mix these. And looking good, I'm pretty happy with this shade. Maybe a little bit of black. Where did I put it? There we go, just a tiny bit. We maybe got a little too yellow in there. So. The nice light brown. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that shade. I think that looks good. You can make yours as dark or as light as you want. Um, some trees really are more gray than brown. If you wanna make yours kind of a gray color, you can do that as well. So let's see here. I think it's a little wet still. So maybe We'll give it another minute or two. So we'll just get extra prepared and we'll mix up some pink. So again, I don't have pink paint. You might have some pink shades at home, which is awesome, uh, but I have to make my own. So we're gonna do red and white and we're gonna put it on the clear part of our dish here. And there's red and we'll do a little bit of white, actually, a lot of white because as you saw in the picture it's a pretty light shade of pink and we can do a few different shades um but i like to do lighter first and then we'll accent with some darker shades of pink so let me i'm just going to use the end of this cotton swab that doesn't have any cotton on it and i'm going to mix it up over here and we might need some more white. Yeah. So you want to do more white than red when you are mixing, if you're mixing. So let me add some more. And let's see how that looks. with painting it just takes a little bit of practice a little bit of experimentation which to me is really the fun part of course it's fun to see how it all looks in the end all right it's still pretty dark let's add some more white and see what we're looking like now It's getting there. Okay. I used way too much red, I'm learning. <laughs> but that is okay.
I think I might need to break out my big container of white. And let's do that. And we'll get a big blob of white and get this ready to go. But like I said, while we're doing this, our paint is drying. Our canvas is getting ready for us to paint our tree. So now when it's time to do the blossoms, we'll be ready to go. This is looking good. This is more like the shade I want. It's kind of a cotton candy sort of a color, if you need a frame of reference. I also, when I'm painting something that's real, I like to have a picture of it nearby so I can look at it and see if I'm getting close. Uh, I don't always trust my memory of what something looks like. Okay. Perfect. That's exactly the shade that I want. So let me show you. I have um, there. It's a very light, like I said, cotton candy or bubblegum pink. And I mean, it's hard to see it on camera, but it's not fully mixed. So there's a little bit of white, or there's some white streaks, there's some darker parts, which is how I want it. Because once we start adding our blossoms, um, there's going to be different shades of pink and white and everything going through it. So it looks more realistic. If it's all the exact same shade of pink, it will look more cartoonish, which is okay. If that's what you want your painting to look like, that's perfect. But I want mine to be a little more realistic. So I think, I think our canvas is dry. So I'm going to start my tree, I think, from the bottom here. So I'm going to kind of plan out how I want it to look. So... Let me see how, how it goes. So usually a tree is, is wider at the base, right? Because you have the roots that go out into the ground and then it comes up like this. So we're going to go like that. And this doesn't have to look perfect. I'm just sort of planning out where I want it to go. And we'll, we'll go over here, make a nice trunk. Okay, so you see it's sort of, um, I'm not sure what shape you would call that. Uh, but it's wider on the bottom and it curves up and goes a little bit thinner here. So we'll just go up and you can adjust this if you, realize it's a little too thin, you can make it wider very easily. Or if you make a little mistake, you can um, take some of the blue that we used for the background and just cover it. So I'm going to go and start making my branches. So with a tree, your branches are going to be Y shaped. So if you think about like your arms going up like this into a Y, and then off of this arm, you're going to turn that into another Y and you're going to keep going until you get to the very end. Our branches don't have to look perfect because they're mostly going to be covered up with cherry blossoms, but you want to have that base there. So I'm going to go like that. And maybe this one will come up a little higher. a little more brown and we'll go like that and I kind of like when the branches go off the canvas so it looks like you have a really big tree and you couldn't fit it all in there so I'm going to have mine go all the way to the edge like that okay so see how I have this sort of a Y shape over here I still love my canvas, but look, it went right where I'm going to paint it brown anyway. Happy accident, as Bob Ross would say. Okay, so now I have this really big Y here, and I'm going to split it. Or maybe it's more like a V. We're going to split it to make it even smaller. So just kind of go on the inside like that. And now we have a branch that goes this way, and you have another one here. Now, because this one is all the way towards the end, you can make 
another smaller whoop, another smaller branch that comes off there and you can split this a little if you want or you can just paint it all brown but there now i've split that off into two branches and same thing up here i think i'm going to make this one go even taller and we'll go like that and kind of go in there and same thing here and you just keep going until you're happy with it and then we'll paint it in and we're colored in so there's that one and then we've got this big guy here so i'm gonna go like that I'm going to keep going here and I want this branch to go that direction. It's looking all right. I'm pretty happy with it so far. Okay. So we've got this branch here and I'm going to go And how about we do just a little, whoop, out of eight, and just do a little up there. Okay. I'm pretty happy with my tree. I might adjust a little bit of that. Okay. So now you want to color it in. So we have our outline here. Um, so you just color in your tree. Um, if you want to use a smaller brush, I'm going to use this for some of the details. Uh, I'm going to do that and then I'll be right back. Okay. So I finished up my tree and it looks like this. So I basically just finished painting the inside of it and then I cleaned up some of the outside lines. I had some brown brush strokes from when I was just kind of planning it out. Um, and then I added some smaller branches, just kind of hanging off of the ones that I made initially. So it looks like that. It's not totally perfect, but I'm happy with it. And again, it's just sort of our base, our background. We're not going to see much of it. We'll see more of the trunk than anything else. So some of it is still drying. You want to wait until yours is totally dry. Or you can do what I'm going to do, which is just start on the parts that are dry. And by the time you finish that, the other parts will be dry and you can paint the blossoms there. So in order to paint our blossoms, you're going to take one of these guys, a little cotton swab, and you're just going to dip it into your pink paint that we made before. Just like that. And then you want to start where your branches are because that's where the blossoms would be growing. They're not going to be growing down here in the middle of the trunk. So you just kind of push it into the canvas like you're stamping just like that. Let's see if I can do it so you can see better like that. And you keep going. And the reason why we do this with the cotton swab is it gives it this nice fluffy kind of appearance. Whereas if we try to do it with a brush, the blossoms would be too dark. They would be really opaque, but the way it is now, you can kind of see through it. You can see the branches you know, beneath. Um, and it looks more realistic because cherry blossoms, as you saw in the picture, are these really pretty fluffy, little flowers but if we had just circles of dark pink everywhere it wouldn't look quite like the picture so just keep going until you have your tree as full of blossoms as you would like so i'm going to do a few more here and then show you one other trick before i finish mine up but that's really all you have to do is you keep dipping and you go on these branches and you can extend down they don't have to stay just on the ends of the branches because as you saw in the picture they cover like the whole tree 
Um, so you just kind of start there and then make it as full as you like. So you can keep bringing it down lower um, until you're happy with it. So we're just laying down these initial flowers here, some over here like that. And as I mentioned before, I didn't mix my paint perfectly because I wanted to have a little variation in colors. Another thing you can do is have just some white and add some white blossoms in there because real cherry blossoms are sort of pink and white combined. So I'm going to take just my same Q-tip. It doesn't have to be a new one. Um, and I'm going to go over some of the ones that I already did in pink. And then you get like a nice mixture of color. And if it hadn't dried all the way, now you're mixing it and you're making an, a lighter shade of pink. So every blossom kind of has its own shade, its own character, which is really fun. You know, not everything looks exactly the same. And if you make it too white, that's okay. Go back in with some of the pink, mix it up, you know, have some varying shades of that color and keep going until you've got it how you want it. So I'm going to do that and I will come back and show you the final product. But one thing that I like to do um, is to make some blossoms that are falling down from the tree because they are so light and small, they blow off really easily in the wind and it's really pretty and it kind of looks like it's snowing. So I'm gonna take some pink and some of the white and just kind of make some little blossoms that are falling in the background there. So I'm gonna keep messing with it and I'll show you when I'm done. All right, my friends, I think I am done with my cherry blossom tree. It got a little out of hand and I made it very big, but it's very full and I'm so happy with it. So trying to tilt it here so you can see all of the different shades of pink that I have in there and there's some white as well. Um, and I've got some that are falling down just like a strong breeze came. Let's see, we can go a little closer. I've got some really bright sunlight in here today. There we go. So I'm happy with it. I love my painting and I hope yours turned out really good too. So if you want to send it to us, we would love to see. Um, we'll put the email address in the description box. So thank you for joining me and have fun painting. Bye.